know, it's back-to-back -back weeks. We've gotten good remarks about the defense from Coach Spavadol. Uh, you know, after last week, you had the pick six from Cordell Rogers. You have Levi Bell doing a lot of great things. What's what's going different for this team? I know you were talking a lot about the personnel in fall camp. Do you think that's really the, the big difference in the defense this season? Yeah, players. Yeah, that's the difference. <clears throat> you know, there's might be time to talk about that, you know, we there is good in some transfers. And then there's good in developing your guys that you've had here. So I think it's a combination of that. You know, we've got depth, like I mentioned, all fall camp. And, you know, that's what we're riding with right now. You know, we still got a long way to go. Um, you know, we played some offenses the last two weeks that were more like one-dimensional. You know, we're going to get challenged, obviously, in the weeks to come with the upcoming game against Baylor. And then, obviously, when you get the Sun Belt League. So... We'll see where we're at in five or six weeks. <clears throat> Jordan Revels really looked comfortable at that that new position he's kind of in. What was your, what was your assessment of his performance? You think that was a good game? Yeah, he's good on the edge. You know, now that we have those bodies inside, that we can allow him to play out there. You know, and the other thing is, is those kids aren't playing. You know, the 50, 60 snaps a game. They're playing the 45 snaps a game, which I think goes a long way, especially when you you know you play somebody that throws the ball 55 times. So, you know, that was all. That was a good thing. You know, asked Coach Spav about this, but just from your perspective as the DC, when you look at the film, what are kind of the things that stand out about this Baylor offense? Uh, run game, ball control. You know, they're they're the, arguably one of the best at running the wide zone, the outside perimeter run. Uh, you know, their O line is a definitely is improved from year from last year to this year. Um, you know, it's it's one of those type of runs where. You just the older you, the longer you're in the system, the better you are with it. And you know they've got a, an arsenal of backs. They play four. Um, you know, for the most part, pretty similar body types. You know, but they all run that same track. They're not going to change their identity based on who's at running back. Um, quarterback does a great, uh, better job of the guy last year is managing it. Um, he can throw it when they ask him to. You know, but uh, it all starts with them up front in the run game ball control, um, you know, it's going to be a, a good task. You know, I'm really excited for it for our guys just because I think it'll really <clears throat> establish where we are up front and how well we can physically play the run. And, and then it'll test our depth, you know, because this is a game where, <clears throat> you know, if you don't get off the field on third down, which is going to be key, you know, you get those seven, eight play drives. They just kind of lean on you. They lay on you. And those big bodies of theirs will, will really test our, you know, our toughness, our physical endurance, and hopefully we'll be up for the challenge. <clears throat> you know, only two weeks into the season, but with two solid performances from this defense so far, at their highest potential, what do you kind of feel like the identity of this defense can be? You know, I don't know. I mean, we, we, we take it one week at a time. You know, our, our, we talk about getting the ball back to our offense to win the game or winning it on the on the last drive you know I mean that's where we're at we don't look at the statistics you know we we talk about week to week I mean we start a chart every week and it is there's you know we the opportunity is at zero you know and then we after post game we put up how many snaps they had and how many negative plays we got and we, it restarts each week you know we don't look at the grand scheme of things of that nature so there's a lot of football you know everybody sets a you know, a week ago, everybody was down because we lose. This week, everybody wants to write the theme of, hey, you know, you guys are good. Well, in our walls, we don't we don't need – that's your all's job. You know, we, we put more attention in, all right, the building, elevating each week, improving each week, working your weaknesses, and getting to a point where we know that when we get into week eight and week nine, can we win those games? And, you know, that's, how, that's what good teams do. That's how you get to a bowl game. Uh, against FIU, you put them in an unpredictable situation, second and long, third and long, and obviously the third down conversion ratio was 28%. So getting them in those unpredictable situations was actually you were in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. What was the difference in getting that the down and distance so that you are more proactive in your play calling versus reactive? Uh, I think we're more aggressive on first down. Um, we were able to get negative plays. And, and you know, and, and to say what, from my seat to be able to just four man rush on a pass setting and play coverage and get there, that's been uncommon around here. Um, almost wasn't trusting it early just because of the past. And 
by the time I got about midway through the second quarter, I was like, all right, let's let these boys go. And uh, we did a good job changing coverage. The, you know, we, I thought if we could just change the appearance for the quarterback in coverage and get him to hold the ball, our pass rush could get there. And for the most part, it did. We got to clean up some scrambling lanes. You know, that was their biggest, that was their biggest uh, offensive, you know, part to them was quarterback taking off. And, you know, it, it's the first time we've experienced, uh, you know, Coach Greer, our D-line coach, has experienced some guys that can actually win. You know, there's a little bit of blood in the water, too. They thought they could get there. And, you know, we've got to play within the system. You know, if you're going to be a controlled rush for scramble, you got to be a controlled rush. And if he breaks pocket, that's your job to contain him, you know. And we weren't very good at that at a couple times. So, you know, obviously pass rush was big. That helped in that. And changing it up and blitzing a little bit more. <clears throat> Coach, how tough was how, how tough was it for you to see what happened to Chris Mills in the game? Tough. I mean, um, I've coached DBs a long time, and, you know, you see that kind of frozen body fall, and it's, uh, you know, I've had some things in my career. Uh, you know, I had a young man almost pass away on the field when I was at U of H, and um, I don't take those things lightly. I think it's a uh, – it's the thing that as soon as you see that, the most important thing is is the well-being of that young man and, and making sure that his family has communication. And then, obviously, you got to be there for your players because, you know, they were first on the scene a little bit, some of them, and that was that was tough. But uh, good to have the time to regroup and really appreciative of how everybody was around and supportive in handling it. <clears throat> you mentioned that. Um how difficult the situation was and then having to line back up, you know, after the field was cleared. What was your message to the team in terms of trying to play through that afterwards? You know, you just talk about, you kind of go back to the, the things you talk about from a foundation standpoint, just adversity, um, you know, energy, um, focus, things of that nature. Um, obviously, trying to update them that, you know, Mills was alert and in and, and a good spot. Mm -hmm. um, and then just, hey, we got a job to do. So that's kind of where we were at with it. Cordell Rogers is one of the few players that um, is still here that you inherited, you know, back when you came on in 2019. How much have you seen him grow and how happy were you for him with the plays that he made this past week? Oh, I'm tremendously happy for him. You know, you got him, Baby J, London. Nico, those guys are kind of the last man standing, and I always grab them, you know, when I can, and we talk about just where they were a long time ago, and, and kind of relive some of their their growing pains and their youthful experiences. And you know, Rod has had um, Rod's a guy that has had a lot go, you know, not always right with him in his career, and I was as happy as anybody to see him have that smile on his face that he's got that, you know, sometimes he doesn't show and just to be able to play at a high level. And, you know, it was his birthday weekend, so that's a pretty good way to get some two picks and, and, and have a have a celebration. Two weeks in and one player that's really stood out, um, Levi Bell, you know, first year transfer from La Tech. His brother Ben also made a good play. The two of them combining on a sack, in fact, this past week. The expectations for Levi were pretty high. He was, you know, named as a starter coming in. Has he exceeded your expectations, though, two weeks in? Um, yeah. I mean, he, he's relentless. I mean, he gets more production on plays that you wouldn't necessarily think he could get to. You know, he chases the ball down the field and gets a couple extra tackles a game. Um, you know, against Nevada, I think we rushed three, like four or five times only, and he had quarterback hits on two or three of them. And that's just effort. And, you know, it's great for the guys around him to see it. You know, and he uh, he practices that way, though. Like, if you went out there today, you'd see exactly what you saw on Saturday. And, you know, I couldn't be uh, more thankful for him to be here and his brother Ben. I mean, they've been – they've transitioned well. All our newcomers have. You know, we did a really good job of taking that part into consideration on to, in recruiting. And, and I think that, you know, the maturity of those young men and the, the, the way they – they, I wouldn't say there's. they lead by example. You know, their leadership comes from how they practice every day. Mm -hmm. But if what you see on Saturday is what you see every day with Levi Bell.